Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2020 Crew Mode, Episode 92. It's the Queen stage of Trino Adriatico. It's stage five of seven. Six is a sprint. Seven is a short time trial. So, well, that will determine the final positions. Today will determine the majority of the positions. It's the only mountain stage. There's a lot of climbing. We've done the first, and it already was not easy. You can see the breakaway not really solidly established because the chase has been hard and you can see we have a couple riders Swift out the back already quite a few on this category one climb now this is the steepest climb before the final climb but still riders are already being dropped you can see fatigue in every single one of my riders also though for the first time in a long time <laughs> Uh, we have drawn a substantially positive race day condition. Some teams can't be lots right and way. lots of green. In fact, every single rider is at least a plus one today with three plus fives. Uh, I have not had a positive race day condition like this in quite a while. We're the team the is line. really, team really up for it today. More more now, to it's going to be tough it's going to be very tough to win even with all this green reason being the top the two climbers the are in a possibly in the There's world the but Some definitely the top to two in this race are on the same team bernal and carapaz paulus who's become one of the top climbers in this game on this database is also here there's a lot of really, really strong climbers. Peloton's down to 118 already. A groupetto is forming. So an ever thinning group. Three minutes to the front. Three riders. One rider left in no man's land. Very much looking like the stage winner will come from today, which means there's going to be bonus seconds as well available at the top. You figure Idios has got to be a favorite for a 1-2 or at least for the win. But a podium, very much available to us. Our best chance for recovery is right now. Also, it is our best chance to get back and get some water. I'm glad that I've remembered that. The Rainsford, water guy for the day. In the breakaway group. As they go over the top, the riders breathe a sigh of relief and hope to recover a bit on the way down. Down to just the three riders off the front, and they've lost a minute of their lead. And there we go. Everybody's got water. This is where the climbing is going to start to get a little more ferocious, a little more for so real. So let's go 82. 118 chasing three. It's definitely no lifting of pace. We're not tr catching the, the breakaway super fast, but we are catching. I mean, we've already picked up 20 seconds since the sprint point. Fatigue is there, 52k to go, 5.4k on the climb, 7%. Okay, we're blinking red, we don't want to be dropping back. Malar is... The group is slowly Malar, you gotta speed up. Whoa, pace. whoa, Rodriguez, come on, don't get caught behind a slow-moving rider and go back like that. Okay, we'll pick up their pace, both of them. Okay, Berwick's okay, the other guys are okay. Down to 99 riders, down to 86 riders. Rodriguez again going to the edge and getting caught behind the slow moving riders. But uh, we've covered it off as we go to hit the top. With 70 riders left in the peloton and my entire team here. Rainsford, Killen, Johnson, very fatigued after that, but they will recover a bit on this descent. 65 chasing two and i've got my full team for the final so climb to sure to we will definitely no get enough recovery in here uh i should grab water one final time though Rainsford now <gasps> Ooh, i thought he got split off for a second there he is still going backwards Rainsford, come on you have you don't have water yet how does he still not have water come on Where's the race organization? Where's the neutral service? Okay. All right. All right. He's okay. He's taking care of it. 
And with 30k to go, we've got everybody up here and nearly fully recovered. We are as well set as any team could be. And for a rare time, I think we are looking at being the aggressor on the final climb. Not on this penultimate hill. We pull back one breakaway rider and the, the last the one. There you go. The no 67 chance. now in the peloton. Get over the top here. They really are moving. The pack up the tempo. Too far, or it's going to start breaking up. To Kenick. Turning the screw here. Such that the Enios attacking. Are it's Bernal attacking now. Ooh, he might not win today. Wasting his energy like that. Alright, we will line things up shortly. Alright. 16k to go. 16k, and I think we're going to pick about a 90... It's a big climb. Set a 90 as a base. So, Rodriguez... Yes, definitely the leader. Is Gin the main guy? There you go. And then... Millar. Oops, what are you doing back there? Berwick. And then probably Johnson, right? Yes, Johnson. Johnson climbing at an 80. Uh, Killen. And finally Berwick. Or is it going to be Berwick and then Killen? 76. 75. Okay, Rainsford it is. So, base of 90. For now, we'll go into the 80s. The no Brings us out front. The Peloton has definitely accelerated, meaning that an attack is highly unlikely. Okay, Rainsford, gel. We're about to hit the climb. Okay, 2.7 right now, so it's not that steep yet, but we are definitely going uphill. And we're drastically opening the gap behind us, so this is it. Final group, 67 riders. That's still large, but guaranteed, we've got to be the only team with everybody here. There's only 60 other riders besides my seven. Down to 10k. On to David Killen. Rainsford, his day is done. He's going to drop from 17, completely out of contention here. That's okay, this is the big day. 10.2 on the actual climb, 7.5% gradient, but we've obviously already been going uphill for a while. First rider is dropped, it's not Rainsford. Johnson, get ready. 8.5k to go. Killen, back off a little bit. I want you to last just a little longer. 8k to go. All right, we are climbing for real now, so we are going to back off a little more. 85 for Zach Johnson. And use that mountain rating to its fullest. 85. 6.9. So Johnson is going to give us... That's 1.5 now. Makes a couple hundred meters more. Berwick, let's go 84. You also have that 80... Mountain rating today and really good resistance. I bet you he could lead us out for a good while here. Group's down to 47 now. Johnson fading. Get a good look at what's left here. You can see a lot of riders going backwards. We're going to be down to about 30. Yep, 34 there. And we are still in the optimal position with 4K to go. Not a lot of energy left here, but that's damage to everyone. Malar, let's get you ready to go. 3.4 now. Berwick, nearly done. Under 3k to go. Malar is not going to give us much here, but Berwick, what a run, down to 2.7. Okay, let's go 82 for a moment, and let's get Gin ready. Okay, the other teams are coming back at us. Malar didn't last long, unfortunately. We're down to two guys, 2.5k. Can't attack this hard. We've got to make it last. Here comes the two Ineos riders. 
Carapaz, Bernal, Sivikov going. 1.8k, Rodriguez, Gel. Okay, 85 for Gin. Down to 20, chasing 3. Now it's down to 8, chasing 4. 7, chasing 4. 1k to go. Rodriguez is going to make it to the end. Gin, not quite. There we go. The sprint okay. is on. The riders Gin, are setting themselves up. 99. And Rodriguez. What do we do here? 600 meters is a lot. Four hundred meters. Okay, now I think we can emerge out of this at about an eighty-five. Because here comes the final he attacks. Deep inside himself to earn this victory. Bernal for the win. Sivakov second. Thomas third. Tollett, Clanchy, Murdick. There's Rodriguez. There's Skin. Both in the top ten, ahead of Paulus, ahead of Carapaz. Two of the favorites. Two of the three favorites are behind both of our guys. And then big gaps. Venipol, Misnada, Rivera. Even bigger gaps. So we'll have two guys in the top ten. Maybe better. And Rodriguez has the a real shot at a top run, five overall with a time trial a still to come. Short one. More of a prologue, but still. Still a chance. To Mulan down at 15th. Yeah. Gaps everywhere. Rodriguez at 57 seconds behind. Again, minute five, and then a big gap behind that, so it really opens up. Uh, Millar and Berwick come in at 2.33. So let's check on that general now. Rodriguez still in the top five already in fourth place, and he'll have a shot at cracking the top three in that last stage. We'll have a shot. It's going to be a shot, but it's not going to be a guarantee. Bernal, only a 72 on the time trial, 71 on the prologue's going to matter more. It's short, 10K. So a 71. Sivakov, good time trialist. He'll be tough to beat. Prologue's not as good. Thomas, 78. Rodriguez, uh, also not as good on the prologue. That could hurt. Uh, Mernick is actually going to be hard to hold off. Palace, we should be able to beat. Carapaz, we will definitely be able to beat. Venipole's going to be really hard to hold off. Gin in the top 10. He should move up a spot or two. Rodriguez, I think we're going to have a harder time staying in the top 5 than we are getting into the top 3 because of the length. If it was longer, I think he'd be pretty much staying put. A couple guys are going to go backwards. Bernal. Will he lose enough time to lose the lead? We'll find out. All right, already a bad start to the day. A minus one for Killen. It's 10.2K, so very, very short. Right now, time gaps, obviously the big thing that we're trying to keep an eye on. Joseph Berry has the lead comfortably 19 seconds ahead of Eve Lampart and Hepburn. Overall, the spread is about two and a half minutes with a lot of riders falling in that just inside a minute gap. So that's what we need to keep an eye on. Uh, not big wind. In fact, right now there is no wind. Uh, if the wind picks up, it's tailwind heading into a headwind towards the finish. It's very, very flat. Otherwise, uh, we could see an 80 was a bit too hard for Killen. His prologue just to 72. And I'm trying to think what the split is here. It's it's almost all prologue, so uh, just a slight time trial influence. Definitely less than a point for most riders. So he's a little over a 72 on the average today. Uh, you can see he's running out of energy before the finish, well before the finish, 700 meters before the finish. So he's going to lose quite a bit of time there. That's 53 seconds down overall. So that's, that's a good kind of standpoint to, to see that we can at least keep it within a minute. There will be time gaps, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that as we go forward. Of course, Ginn and Rodriguez are the other two best time trialists, and they'll be the last two to go with the hopes on them. Rainsford coming up soon. An 80 was definitely too hard, 
So we'll want to start with about a 77 or 78 for Rainsford. We'll try a 77 and see how that goes. You want to keep it balanced throughout. That's the best way to maximize your time. So you want to get it just right. And if you have a little bit left, then you can attack at the end. So we're going to try a 77 with Rainsford, see how that goes. Is that still a hair too fast? Or is he slowly gaining back? He started with a slight deficit. Nah, he's slowly gaining back here, isn't he? He's almost to neutral now. 77 is going to just make it. Zero on the race day condition for him, so that's actually a minus two from what he should have. Killen was a minus one from what he should have, so that's a combined minus three so far. Rainsford coming up on the line, has run out of energy about 75 meters before the finish. Minute two, but he's only a 68 prologue, 70 today. So it looks like I can get everybody within about a minute of at least Barry's time. Bjerg, Asgreen, Kung all coming in into second, third, fourth now. Still nobody able to beat uh, Joseph Barry's time. And we've got uh, Berwick setting off with a plus four. Nice, 77 just did it. Uh, he'll have a 72 prologue today. And good resistance. Malar, we need to get him ready. He's a 67, so I'm going to put him at a 76. The 77 is really pushing it. Uh, and Malar's got a pretty bad prologue rating. See Malar already getting closer to neutral. Berwick still kind of fighting it a little bit. So we'll drop him to a 76 now to try to make it all the way to the finish. A little bit of 76, a little, and it's definitely a mix. Uh, again, getting ready. He's definitely on a plus today, a big plus. He's moving up. He is moving up. We're definitely going to 77 for that one. Berwick crosses the line 58 seconds down. I didn't get to see if he had energy left at the end or not. We were just getting Gin off and running. Malar, push a little harder to the end. Push a little harder to the end. Push a little harder to the end. Cracks right at the line. 119, but he's only a 67. Okay, on to Gin. Gin in good shape. Even at a 77, he's already got a little bit left in the tank. Not a very good turn there, though. The intermediate time Fifth, is good, but uh, sixth, still five seconds. Making. Good, good shape right now. He's looking at an 85. I mean, come on. Why shouldn't he be putting in a phenomenal time? Rodriguez also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, 77 for him as well. Um, again, we're going to push harder to the end. I think you can go at 78. It looks like these guys have really good ratings. So, again, coming up towards the finish. Pushing, pushing. He's down to seventh now. Eight seconds. So somebody putting in a new top time. All the way pushed to the line. Fourth place, 11 seconds down for Denny Ginn. Can Rodriguez do something similar? Because he might see the podium if he does that. Right now, Ginn is the only contender. Roglic is seventh. The Mulan is 11th. Rodriguez, his 78, seems to be holding. We might have to go to a 77. We'll keep an eye on it. He's really close on that mark. 77. 77. Okay, that's a 79. He is so close. Coming up on the line. Come on, Rodriguez. He was 15th, 10 seconds down at the intermediate sprint. He does not have enough to push until the very, very end. 25 seconds behind, 15th. Boy, there was a lot of good time trialists here. Not, not many contenders. Venipol takes the win, though. Thomas takes third. Ginn is sixth. Sivakov comes in 12th. That's why I said it was going to be really hard to gain time. Rodriguez did really well and is still just 17th. Now 18th. He's not going to gain anything from that. I, top 5 
I think he's got top five still. It's not moving up, though. He's not going to move up. Avetapol for the win on the stage. What is the GC? I didn't see Bernal anywhere. Does Bernal lose a ton of time? No, Bernal hangs on to the win. Thomas second. Sivakov, Avenipol, Mernick, Rodriguez drops to sixth. Ginn moves up to seventh. Carapaz eighth. Conchi and Paulus round out the top ten. Oh, so close. Are you kidding me? We lost the top five. Rodriguez on good condition. Didn't put in a fantastic time. Ginn, however, put in a fantastic time on a very similar condition. And they closed in on each other from a 10 second separation actually it was more than a 10 second separation uh, they had about a 30 second separation they had 10 seconds going into that mountain stage and then it further went uh, another 20 seconds away it was about a half a minute separating them and then that closed right up Ewan winning the points classification Venipole, Young Rider. We get the team classification, so that was nice. It was a good race. It was a good race. Again, 6th place, 13 seconds. Rodriguez, just 13 further seconds behind. So that closed by 13. It was an 18-second gap, so actually it was only uh, 8 seconds that Rodriguez gained on that previous stage. But their gap closes down to five seconds. We were so close to fourth place, but a Vettipol stage winner moves ahead of us. Mernick, who was one second down, moves six seconds ahead of us. We did we gain time on Bernal? Did we even where where did Bernal end up finishing? Was he on a plus five or something? Still haven't seen Bernal's name. Did I miss something here? There's no way he's over a minute down. He only had a 40-second lead. Let's try this again. Bernal, Bernal, Bernal. What did you... He got Bernal 16th, 23 seconds. How did he do that? With a 71 prologue, right? Uh, Rodriguez had an 81... On the day, Bernal had to have had a plus five. Wow. What a result for him to keep the win. Dang. Well, uh, that was unexpected. Let's see if we get any recognition from the sponsor for top ten. Okay, so we got a stage top three, which was a single plus. We get top ten. Rodriguez, the higher placed, so that's a double plus. So we, we do get some bonuses out of that good performance. Results, registered riders are maxed out. Squad evaluation getting better and better. Of course, the uh, Australian one is what's affecting that. It's no longer Johnson who's the leading man. It's Berwick after winning the Australian National Championships. And that evaluation has picked up some. So this squad evaluation should be rising. I mean, if you look at these two things, we're at an almost 50% evaluation and a 100% evaluation. We should have a 70 plus, right? We should have a 50 plus, and yet somehow our squad evaluation is like 15%. This has only recently risen, so over time that will pick up some. But it still strikes me as odd as... Nothing in our evaluation is this low. So why is our squad evaluation that low? Mathematically, it doesn't make sense, but uh, okay. <laughs> Can you convince me in the comments below why that is? I don't know. Okay, well, we still have some time till our next race. It's a week anyway. Three stars. It's World Tour, so we will be focused on that. Uh, but that is not the only race upcoming. We've got Catalonia, and then that race, Bink Bank, again, Fevolgem. Uh, maybe I'll I'll just kind of bypass Catalonia, and we'll focus on those three Belgian races, four, five Belgian races, five Belgian classics coming up. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Catalan Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.